Hi, this is Andy of Andy's Personal Development, and we are currently live in the breakout room. So, welcome and welcome, and we love being here for you with quality and value to inspire and to transform. Remember, we are on Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and iTunes. Today, as usual, we have a special guest to share with you for your development and growth and to live your better informed life. So, grab a cup, pull up a seat, and stay tuned for the introduction right here now, live in the breakout room. It's the place for health, happiness, and prosperity. Stay tuned. Hi, my wonderful people. Our next guest in the breakout room, Alison Roberts. Alison is a transformational coach, speaker, author of best-selling book, Behind the Power. This is our special guest. As a leading transformation coach, Alison Roberts is highly sought after to share her triumphant journey from family abuse to a life filled with joy, purpose, and prosperity. Her proven systems help others heal emotional pain so that they too can live their best life. So, from her publication, Behind the Power, the family, to her engaging smile, and staying healthy. She also hosts her own radio show entitled Outrageous Freedom through the Bold Brave Media Network. Allison uses her training to overcome trauma, childhood issues, self-worth struggles, and more. So, let's welcome this dynamic guest, Allison Roberts. Live in the breakout. Okay, and we are live in the breakout room with our guest, Alison Roberts. Alison, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, and thank you so much for having me and that amazing introduction. It was fantastic, so thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I'm so glad that you're on, that you took the time to be with us. And we are happy that you enjoy the introduction. So, Alison, as we continue with our show, I'd just like to let our guests um, know which you are, that this is a very special time for us because we believe that your information, your story is going to be very inspirational and add lots of value to the people who will be listening live or otherwise. So, here we go. We normally like to start the show by asking our guests about their childhood days. The most foundational years in our lives are normally between the ages of one to seven, eight. I don't know what it was for you like, Alison, but could you share if you can remember, recall any striking childhood memories that you have of yourself when you were growing up? Share with us, please. Yeah, so childhood for me was pretty um, horrific. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow, it was. Wow. Yeah, it was. It was a battlefield. Um, my mother is not well, and my father was. Um, he was absent physically and emotionally until my, till way into my adult years when he and I finally reconciled and and came to peace in terms with everything, but. She pretty much ran the show, okay. and uh, it was it was ugly. It was very <laughs> ugly. Wow. Okay, but I want to assume, and maybe I shouldn't, but I want to assume that the times that you would have gone through during that childhood period would have prepared you, strengthened you, build you up emotionally and otherwise. Uh, and helping you to take the mindset approach that you did in becoming the person that you are now because you are so inspirational to so many people. So how did you make that transition 
from those times, those horrifying times, as you said, to becoming an accomplished individual that you are today? How did you make that transition? Well, I'm going to tell you that I know for a fact that every hard thing that we go through, it happens for a reason. Okay. For an absolute reason. And mm -hmm. so when I was four years old, um, I was playing with my siblings and the neighborhood kids. And uh, I was really small when I was a kid. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not now. I'm five eight. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, okay. I, I tower now. But it, when I was a child, I was tiny. Right. And they would never let me play sports with them. Mm. So... To make a really long story short, I accidentally, and it was an accident, um, I was accidentally hit in the head with a baseball bat and it split wow. my head. Wow. Oh. Yeah. And so my grandmother happened to be at the house and she was like super religious. Um, so I was in the back seat of the car with my head in her lap on the way to the hospital. And I, I kept leaving my body um, and coming back. I mean, I was dying basically in the back seat of the car. And I remember this dark-skinned man um, with these light green eyes sitting next to my grandmother in the back seat of the car, and I knew it was Jesus. Like, oh I, wow! Like I, I knew it was him. Like no one uh -huh. had, to, and he didn't say a word to me until we got to the hospital, and then then I heard him say. Um, you're you're gonna be okay and um i will never leave you wow amazing yeah and i i don't share that story um with a lot of people because of religion and i know that it, it can really like mess with, mess with some people um <laughs> but I, it kept me sane like the whole rest of my life i mean it's um, because as you know, from reading my, my bio, you know, I, I, I ended up pregnant and homeless and living in my car. Um, mm. I, knew that, I knew that Jesus was with me. I knew that, I knew that somehow, some way, you know, it was, I was going to figure it out or some, something that's going to happen. Um, and I've been through some pretty serious things as, you know, as an adult, um, and, I just, that's why, you know, in my work, yes, you know, yes, I'm a brainiac and yes, I use mindset work and yes, I use all the science of the brain and all of those things. And it, and those, it's very important. Yeah. But also incorporate spirituality because we need to know that there's an invisible force, an mm -hmm. invisible team yeah. on the other side who's always working on our the half always excellent amazing thank you so much for sharing allison that was very touching quite moving and i'm looking at the information here again and i'm seeing that you went through a lot of emotional uh discomforts during that period of time but you came through and you came through really strong and now we know why so tell us what was behind the, the theme of the book? And I use that word because the theme of the book is behind the power. <laughs> yes. What was behind the theme of the book? What was the inspiration that you had to produce such a wonderful book? Well, I work with people's shame um, because shame is, is the driving force for every bad decision right. that we yes. make. You know, yes. it really is. Um, and so... I was um, I was in a deep meditation and I was asking, you know, the universe, like, what next step do you want me to take? I'm always asking that, you know, yeah. what next step do you want me to take? And I got this vision for, you know, to bring these women together who have been through some really hard things. I mean, we're talking mm -hmm. about sexual childhood trauma and yeah you know, stripping and using drugs to, wow. yeah. you know, yeah. coming out of that to their a husband beating them to, you know, all of these things. Right. And so the inspiration for the book is to help women and men because men, men need help too. 
women we do. and men we do. You know, we do. know that you are not alone because shame wants us to believe that we're the only ones who've ever been beaten. We're the only ones who've ever taken a recreational drug. We're the only ones who've ever stripped or had someone commit suicide. Like shame wants you to just believe that, you know, wow, you're so, you're such a horrible person that yeah. you know, you're the only one who's ever gone through this. And so people, when we, and it almost makes me want to cry because when we released the book last year, um, like within just a few days, literally people from all over the world were writing me. They were emailing me saying, I finally see that I'm not alone. I finally understand that I can heal from all of these horrible decisions that I've made, that it doesn't, yeah. the decisions don't define me. They don't make me a bad person. Like, thank you yeah. so much. And that's, that was the inspiration for it was so that people know that they're not innately broken, that they're innately powerful. Great. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Then you went on to, you, you made a movie in, in the spring of 2019. It was released. Could you tell us about that? Well, COVID actually did not release the movie. Right. It's really, um, it's one of those things where it may, it may be released. It may not be released. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we don't know, but yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the movie um, is written and it, you know, it's sitting there ready and waiting for, for someone to pick it up. But um, it, it is the story of, you know, being engaged to be married and then failing a pregnancy test and then being kicked out of the house and having the doors locked and all of the things and living in my car and being rescued out of that car by, um, by a professor that was at my college. He was, he, he and his wife were incredible humans and they helped me. Um, and yeah, so you know your your lips to God's ear, Andy. I hope I hope that you know that it is released one day. That would be yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. You have been through so much, Allison. And looking at you, I mean, like from the outside, it doesn't appear that you have been through so much. But that just tells me that just testifies to me of the inner strength that we have as as people as human beings. And, and I, I want you to tell the people out there that are listening. There's so many of us that are struggling. I know that people struggle. I see them every day. I struggle through sometimes. We all go through our, our struggling moments in life. But yeah. I'd like you to say, what is your biggest word that you would say to people now that are experiencing some level of trauma? And they need directives. They need somebody to tell them, hey, that's not the end of it all. This is not your final destination. There is hope. How do you convey that message to them, Allison? I think that the biggest thing that people need to hear is that the trauma happened to them because the other person is broken. Ah, okay. Not them. Yes, yes. Because so many people believe that trauma happens to them because there's something wrong with them. Right. And they were just an innocent bystander in the way mm -hmm. of a projectile of pain. You know, it's like a bullet, right? Like yeah. you didn't, no one, no one deserves to receive that bullet. So right. it's, it's the same thing. Um, and, you know, to, to someone who's watching this or listening to us right now, and they're just like, yeah, awesome, but you don't understand, you know, <laughs> you, you, you haven't been through what I've been through. Um, I would say to them, you're right. Yeah. I don't understand how, how you are receiving your pain. Um, and I do not understand how you personally feel. Um, but I don't have to understand it. No one, no one has to understand it to see yes. you and yes. feel you and get you. Yes. I understand. And thank you so much for sharing. Allison, you did mention that. A Napoleon Hill writing yeah. made a tremendous difference in your life. You want to share that with us, please? What Napoleon Hill writing are you referring to? Um, it's his book, Think and Grow Rich. Ah. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, he was yeah. way ahead of his time. 
right, way right. Of, like he wrote that book in the 30s talking about you know anything that you think can you know you you believe and see the thing is andy is that we're raised that you know if you get the straight a's mm -hmm. then you get the money if yeah. you are you know beautiful then you get the lover right yeah and so yeah. It, what napoleon hill taught me and what he teaches everyone is that if you believe first <laughs> that it's possible then our brain has to start seeking evidence for it. It's like, you know, if you want a red Corvette or you buy a red Corvette, what the only road, the only cars that you see on the road are red Corvettes after that. Like everybody has a red Corvette. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Like, I get it. <laughs> yeah. It's because our brain has that receptive, you know, activator in it. So it's, that's what he taught. And uh, I actually read that book when I was living in my car mm -hmm. and Every night I would picture, you know, being in this warm, because it was freezing cold outside, um, to be in this warm room with these. I actually went so far as to visualize these curtains with these little tiny flowers on them. Wow. And when my professor and his wife let me into their home for a couple of days, their guest room had curtains with little tiny flowers wow yes yeah. yes. yes wonderful tell us allison what what specific life lesson would you say that has been the most impactful in your life looking back and thinking about all the things that you've been through if you were to choose one what would it be for you oh wow that's a great question <laughs> the biggest life lesson um I think the biggest life lesson would be to make our decisions based mm -hmm. on our heart, right. our intuition, mm -hmm. our gut feeling, instead of trying to please other people first. Right. Okay. That's wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Now, you have a... a a number of uh, speaking topics that you have worked on. And I just want to touch on a few of them a little bit. Um, it says here, the seven steps to outrageous freedom. And the talk is ideal for entrepreneurs. You want to, you know, express yourself on that a little bit for us? Yeah, so there are seven steps to personal freedom mm -hmm. um, and they they sound so simple and and they are they do sound very elementary but when you start to actually really apply them to your life instead of yeah. just being like oh that sounds really simple and i'm going to go over here and try the hard thing mm -hmm. um it actually does work so step number one is have a plan right don't sleepwalk through life. Like, have a plan for your life. Right. Number two, make the closest people to you aware of the plan that you have. Yeah. Number three, have an accountability partner. Someone mm -hmm. who's going to be like, hey, you said the plan was this. Why are you, you know, why are you over here doing this? Like, what's going on with you? Right. Um, number four is to set boundaries first for yourself secondly with other people you have to you have to have boundaries andy you have yes to. yes number five is to have some kind of faith like i don't care if it's this ballpoint pen and the universe doesn't care what your faith is but have some faith in something other than mankind yeah <laughs> because you're always going to be mankind is always going to let us down that's right so you have yeah. to have faith in something that's not that um number six learn what works for you because there are some things that absolutely work for you and some things that don't and stop trying 
if six o'clock in the morning to work out does not work for you, stop trying to make it work for you. Right, right. And then seven is rinse and repeat. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Wonderful. And the next one is entitled The Miracle of Us. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so we are we are so powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if if I believe that you're against me, it doesn't matter if you get down on your hands and knees and tell me that you're not against me, if I believe that you are without any proof whatsoever, you know, maybe it's the blue shirt you have on, you know, and maybe my dad always wore blue. And mm -hmm. so now you're just, you know, you're a bad man because you have blue on. Like wow. we are that, we are that powerful. We, mm -hmm. we, so the miracle of us is that, we can change. Yeah. That's the big miracle is that the stories, the ideas, the way that we were raised, our, our grandparents' stories that they that they imparted on us and that they drilled into our heads. If we don't now as an adult, if you don't agree with all of that, if it doesn't, if it doesn't suit you well, then you can divorce it. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I got in actual trouble um, in my Sunday school because they had a picture of Jesus, a, a picture of yeah, Jesus yeah. on the wall, and he was had long blonde hair and blue <laughs> eyes. And I kept saying, like, that's not him. <laughs> that's <laughs> not him. Like that. I got my mouth washed out with soap. I got oh, stuck in the corner. Um, so it's just like, you know, the stories that people tell us and, and because they're an authority figure, we're just like, oh, well, that has to be right. You know, I mean, they're, they're right. We, the miracle of us is that we, we get to believe and choose whatever we want to believe and choose. And the miracle of us, Andy, is that we all are, if you scrape away all of the paradigms that our parents put on us and the country that we live in and the politics and all of those things. If we, we scrape all of those off, we are love. Wow. That's powerful. That is so powerful. Uh, we're going to end on that note for now. We're going to take a quick break and let Alison gather her breath. She has been feeding us with some wonderful inspiration and excellent value. So we just wanted to stand by, folks. We're going to take a quick ad break, and we will be right back. Please do not go anywhere. Stand by for this ad break. Hi, people. This is a special invitation for you to join our community. Yes, we're inviting you to join our community for 2022. What's in store? Well, what we want is your feedback on our content and our guests, but more so on what you need to be inspired and transformed from your current condition to one of happiness, health, and prosperity. So drop us a line and reach out. Help us to better help you achieve your goals. So, people, inbox me at www.facebook.com slash mddreamer slash that's www.facebook.com slash mddreamer slash or send me an email at lovebitsa at gmail.com that's lovebitsa at gmail.com we love hearing from you as we build our partnership in growth and development and we look forward to your communicating help us to help you to live a better life in personal growth and development from Andy's personal development. We love you. We look forward to hearing from you. See you soon. Bye for now. Okay, and we are back live with our special guest, Alison Roberts in the breakout room. And we were talking about all her topping topics and her expertise with regards to helping people overcome their struggles. 
And we want to go on to the last one. It is entitled Five Easy Steps to Overcome Self-Sabotage. Tell us a bit about that. I think I need I need to hear a lot more about this, you know, in, in, in real time. Tell us more about this. Yeah, so the five easy steps is a brain model that mm-hmm. I use. Okay. And it's C T F A R. Wow. And what it stands for is circumstance, uh-huh. thought, uh-huh. feeling, action, result. Because that's right. how our brain works. Okay. So an outside circumstance happens. We have a thought. We have millions of thoughts actually, but we have a main thought. Uh huh. It makes us feel something. And then we act on that. And then it gives us our results. So an example of this is you wake up in the morning and the thought is, or the circumstance is morning, the circumstance is morning. The thought is, man, I can't wake up. And Uh that makes you feel tired. And so the action is you go to the kitchen and you make a big, huge pot of strong coffee and you drink it. And then the result is that you're a little more awake. And we, the reason I use something so simple like that, Andy, is because we we do thought models all day long. Right. You and I have already done like probably a hundred thought models just in the short time that we've been together. Yes. So I teach this because people need to understand that the the circumstance happens, but it's really our thoughts and our feelings about the circumstance that are, are making us act the way that we're acting. It's not the circumstance. It's our response to the circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's everything. So yes. that's the baseline of every single thing that I teach. And it, it, it is just five easy steps because if you start to look at, you know, wow, I can change my mind about something. Um, then you just use these five easy steps and it takes you through the whole changing of the mind process. Excellent. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing, Alison. Uh, on that note, how many different ways can we apply your expertise to our lives? What would you say would be the most effective way to get the most benefit out of your expertise as far as dealing with our personal challenges are concerned? I would say that um, for someone who's who's a novice, the very first thing is just carving out like 10 or 15 minutes a day just for yourself to think. Right, right. Think, okay. journal, meditate, um, get real with yourself. You know, mm-hmm. people, you've got to get very real with yourself. People are not real with themselves. People are real with what the news tells them to think. People are real with what their minister tells them to think or feel that their spouse tells them to think or feel, but very few people really know themselves. And so you Mm got to, you got to learn yourself. You have to. Yeah, that is strong. That is strong. Alison, tell us what, what is your big plan for the future? What is the one thing that you actually feel you need to accomplish and you have this great vision in mind and you know that at some point in the future, it's going to happen. But it's like this burning thing that you need to get done. That one thing that makes a, a big difference for you. What would that be? I think that I think the next big thing for me um, uh-huh. is going to have people writing a whole book, not just a chapter in okay. a book. But I want to guide people to to write their whole entire story mm-hmm. um, and teach them how to get the story out into the world because that's the that's the big part. The book is a small little part, but yeah. people write books because their people are guided to write books, I believe, because God needs an impact. They mm-hmm. need to make an impact. And yeah. so I want to teach people how to do that. Okay. Wonderful. That sounds good. And it says that you're a speaker, transformational speaker, really, coach, author. How do you manage all your your core competencies together? How do you balance that and still have time for your personal life and the things that you need to do in terms of self-care? 
How do you go through the day? A great team. <laughs> have a great team. Sounds good. Songs good. Songs good. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you, would you like to make a shout out to them? Yeah. Um, uh, Laura on my staff is um, she is my social media person, and she uh, she makes sure that you know I'm seen and heard. And then Amor, who actually reached out to you. Um, she is uh she's my admin person and then i have uh, an assistant coach carrie who um you know helps people on my staff just or on my on my client roster feel right right supported and seen and heard and yeah so diana um uh, lib i mean i've got i've got a whole big team of people who really like carry me honestly wonderful wow. Fantastic. Um, there's this particular team that I'm looking at, and it says painless pivots to power. I need for you to elaborate on that because it sounds like it has power in it. Yeah, so we're actually um, we're doing painless pivots to power again mm -hmm. uh, in May. People right. can go to my website and sign up for that. Okay. Um, it's three days of really learning all about why you have shame because we there's a reason we have it it's not just there there's a reason um it's too long to share right now but they can learn about why we have shame um how to tame that shame how to heal how to start to feel empowered and to feel calm and peaceful and joyful. That's what Painless Pivots to Power does for people. Okay. All right. We have a lot of concerns happening in the world, Alison. We have people still trying to deal with the pandemic, COVID-19. We have people dealing with hunger and poverty. And there are so many imbalances. The situation in Ukraine is not helping either. Yeah. Um, if there's one or two things in the world that really you know, takes away the joy from the things that you see. We call it here the pet peeve, you know. It's something that you see in the world and you you wish it, it just didn't exist. What would that be for you? Systemic racism. Wow. Yeah. And why so? It kills my heart, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, you know, to... So, you know, I was trying to explain this to a friend of mine over the weekend, and, and I think that she finally got it. But, mm -hmm. you know, to have two equally talented people, and one of them is at the front of the line because their skin is light, and one of them is at the back of the line because their skin is dark, is mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, it It's and I mean, ridiculous is in it's to me. It's ridiculous that it even that, that there's even a thought process. Yeah, yeah. It follows that, yeah. like, and it's frustrating. Um, it it enrages me, honestly. <laughs> um, wow. And you know, a lot of people are like, "Well, you're blonde and blue eyed. Like, why? What do you care? Like, yeah. you're at the front of, you're at the front of the line, all of a sudden. Why? You know, mm. why do you care?" Mm -hmm. um, and it's because I turned around. Yes. And you, know, you looked at, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I looked I at everyone you. in the line. Yes, yes. Um, and it, it just, I mean, a friend of mine, she uh, she is white. Her husband is not. And um, they were pulled over. And the police officer asked her if, you know, if, she was supposed to be in the car. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My gosh. And we and we have so many, you know, issues that we have to deal with. And most of the time, people just simply don't want to have these conversations because they they're intimidated, they feel insecure, they're afraid of, you know, negative feedback or impact and stuff like that. But you know, I think that we need to be realistic and, and practical about what's happening in the world because one way or the other, 
it impacts us. Yeah. And once something impacts you, you need to have a say, at least an opinion about it or, or be able to express freely your thought process. It's amazing. Alison, if you, if you had the opportunity to speak to the leaders of the world, all the persons that are responsible for making decisions in the countries of the world, if you had that platform and they had no other choice but to listen to your voice, what would you be saying to them? Remove the borders. Mm. But there are so many borders. There are economical borders. There are physical borders, geographical, racial, ethical, so many borders. Yeah. How do they how do they deal with the with the removing of the borders? Well, they would have to relinquish their power over the border, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. And the reason why I asked that question is because I've had a couple of guests that came on and they have families back in Ukraine and they were telling me about the experience. Um, one guy, Steve Bors, you know, his his family come way back from uh, the Ukrainian dynasty and they were talking about the days of, of Stalin and Hitler and stuff and it was touching, it was moving. But you know, currently right now, the world needs some level of leadership that could point them in direction that says, hey, you know what? There is hope for us and there's a certain way that we can get that hope. But I have the feeling that we, we, we kind of lack the... I don't know if it's political fortitude or the uh, the sort of innovative thinking that would take us to another level. But let's say you had to give advice to the president of the United States of America, Joe Biden. What are some of the things that you would say to him? The first thing I would tell him is to follow his gut. Uh-huh. Um to go in a deep meditative state and mm -hmm. listen for guidance. Yeah. Um, and that even if the guidance from God made absolutely no sense yeah. whatsoever, yeah. Uh, because it probably wouldn't, um, to follow that. Yes. Um, I would also tell him that, you know, you can't reason with a sociopath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and unfortunately, not only in the in the United States of America, I mean, we saw it in our previous president, um, yeah. but, uh, you know, in other countries, we vote sociopaths into power. So sad. And it's it's really it's frightening. It's yeah. it's it's not only sad, it's it's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then then when the sociopaths do things like lead people to um, take over our, our government buildings and try and, you know, undo an election and, and take away the voice of the people, we don't punish them. Yeah. So it's just, or the punishment process is very, very slow. And then it's like, you know, um, slap on the wrist. Yeah. Slap on the yeah. wrist. And then, yeah. you know, so, what I would say that to to President Biden, um, first of all, is how grateful I am that he's in office. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, that, you know, he's not too old. Um, it's not too late. And that he has an opportunity right now to to show people that he's not really the one in charge anyway. <laughs> Amazing. That is so true, so dynamically true. Alison, tell us, for you personally, in your life, in terms of your personal goals, things that you would like to accomplish for yourself, not, not for the people that you serve, not for your clients, not for your family, not for your fantastic team, but for you, Alison, the person, are there any things that you are working on personally that you'd like to see come into fruition? It may be challenging, but it's also important for you because you give yourself and you give off yourself. But there are moments when you need to focus on something that is so personal for you and is important for you that it becomes fulfilling and it takes a priority. What 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 would that be for you? Um, I think the 
biggest thing that I'm working on um, for Allison right now is that I want to set up my life where I can work from anywhere in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that is what I'm working on right now. I mean, even though I have a home um, and all of those things, I, I really want to, um, to, and I have a four-year-old grandson and I want to show him that, you know, that we can, we can be and exist the way that we want to, right. um, you know, and I, I know that people that are living in poverty that might be listening to this right now are like, wow, well, that's white privilege right there. Um, and I just want to say to you, no, it's, it's not that at all. I mean, I grew up with no food in the refrigerator. I grew up with, I mean, I still have scars from yeah. where I was abused. Yes. Um, and so I just want to say that, you know, regardless of what anyone has told you, um, regardless of what you has been mirrored back to you um, in the world, you, you matter. Yeah. And you're so important, you know, and that's why I want to work from anywhere in the world. And people are like, yeah, Allison, but that, that that's work. It's really not you. No, it, it is me. I mean, my, my work is what gets me out of bed every day. Um, I want to empower people. I want them to know that they're here for a reason, that they're not a mistake. Okay. Wonderful. That was deep and very emotional. I could feel it. Allison, thank you for being so honest and open with us. And I'm going to try to put a sort of lighter spin on our conversation <laughs> when coming to the end. And I'm going to put you on the spot because I'm going to ask you some questions and it's one or the other. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I love these. Yeah. Okay, great. Would you choose one of the two? Peanut butter and jelly or ham and cheese? Peanut butter and jelly. Why? Um, I don't eat dairy. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay, baseball or basketball? Mm. Oh my goodness, that's a tough one. Um, I'm going to say baseball. Why baseball? Um, I'm just, I'm a huge... Um, fan of a lot of the players, um, starting with Hank Aaron all the way up to, you know, small, some of big Atlanta Braves baseball fan. So yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to say baseball. Okay, great. I like that. Yeah, as we go, Tiger Woods or Michael Jordan? Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, that's wow. tough. Um, I'm going to say Michael Jordan. Okay. Why? Um, I know of someone who was personally impacted by Tiger Woods. Yeah. Um, and the, I've seen uh, second and third hand, the kind of the pain yeah. that she went through. So I'm going to say Michael Jordan. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Will leaders, would you choose between Boris Johnson or Joe Biden? Joe Biden. Why? Um, I just think that President Biden has um, a, a heart for people mm -hmm. that I think a lot of people miss because he fumbles over his words and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. But I think that he has a love and a heart for all people. I really mm -hmm. do. Okay. Finally, jazz or pop? Definitely jazz. <laughs> I, I, I just knew it. I thought so. Why jazz, yeah. Allison? Why? <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I don't like the kind of jazz where, you know, people just get up on stage and just play like all different kinds of uh -huh. tones and then it, yeah, it comes yeah. together and they, yeah. they call it a song. I don't right. like that kind of jazz, but I, I love like smooth music. Uh -huh. That you can just, you know, 
just be in. It's just, it's great to just be in that music. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. You have been a wonderful guest and we have come to the end of the show. We're just 10 minutes over, but that's all right. It has been engaging and very inspiring. I'm going to give Alison just a minute or two to share with you, our listeners, her information, her personal information, and to promote her book, and also to tell you how you can make contact with her if you need her services or speaking engagements. So, Alison, you are going to be the star for the moment once again. Thanks. I'm going to be in the background, so take it away. Thanks, guys. So uh, you can find me on my website, alisonroberts.com. Um, you can also go to my event website, which is behindthepowerevent.com. Um, I'm holding an event in Atlanta, Georgia in October. I would love to have you with me. Um, you can be there either virtually or in person. I will tell you that the magic really happens in person. Um, so you can find out all the ticket information at behindthepowerevent.com. Um, if you want to hear my full backstory, um, you can go to TikTok. It's Allison Roberts underscore, and you can hear all about how I survived abuse, um, the story about my adoption, um, and all of the things. So thank you so much for being with us today. Okay, that is wonderful. So we thank you, Alison Roberts, for being our guest on the program. We have come to the end of the show. It has been very wonderful speaking with you. We appreciate your openness and your ability to express your emotion in such a wonderful manner. We know you have brought value to so many who have listened and who will continue to listen to this program. So we thank you. This is Andy of Andy's Personal Development from the Love Bits A channel. And we thank you so much for more, the opportunity to bring the value into your home that you need. Remember our watchwords, we are for health, happiness, and prosperity. Until next time, we thank you and we thank our guest, Alison Roberts. We say to you, Godspeed, Shalom, Namaste. Stay sweet, stay safe, and stay in love. Bye for now.